Hi, I'm Josh Hadler. I'm a physicist in the Laser Radiometry Project at the National Institute of Standards and Technology here in Boulder, Colorado. In the Laser Radiometry Project, we have a number of applications. Our primary mission for NIST is to support industry, and in this project, we're supporting industry in high accuracy laser power measurement. Uh, laser power measurement is necessary in a broad range of applications from pharmaceutical to telecommunications to industrial manufacturing. Uh, the applications are nearly limitless these days. And in some applications, you really don't need very much accuracy in the measurement of laser power, and in other applications, you need a lot of accuracy. This lab supports high power laser measurements in the hundreds or thousands of watts of laser power. Principally, our customers are in the industrial sector, uh, manufacturing companies that manufacture laser power meters and the like. Uh, laser power measurement in its very nature is pretty much a thermal process these days. You absorb the laser power, you measure how hot that thing got, that absorber, and by understanding the mechanisms of that absorption and understanding the, the mechanisms of your device, you can get a measurement of the laser power or the laser energy that it was absorbed by the device. There are drawbacks to this technology. The first is that you can't use the laser once you've absorbed it. The main challenge in this absorbing capability is if you take a detector such as this and you absorb a certain amount of power, pretty soon it's going to get too hot and you can't use it anymore. And any more power, you're going to damage the detector. Something like this, about 100 watts. Then you have to start water cooling the detector. This gets me another factor of 10. Now I can get about 1,000 watts before it starts getting too hot and I start risking damage. The challenge is now that I'm already water cooling my detector, I start running into limitations of how much power or energy can this detector really absorb before it gets damaged. The measurements that we do here are all tied to electrical standards that are established here at NIST. Uh, our primary measurement is by calorimetry. Here's an example of our calorimeter. It allows us to accurately measure laser power to about 1%. Most of the applications in, in this realm, 1% is a pretty good accuracy for these measurements. Once you get above the capabilities of some of these detectors, you start needing to look at other types of detectors that can absorb laser power and still be able to measure accurately in the many thousands of watts. And that's where we're starting to develop newer measurement technologies. Hi, I'm Paul Williams, a physicist here at NIST. I work in the laser radiometry lab as well. And I want to talk about um, instruments for measuring higher power laser power. This, for example, is a flowing water power meter. It measures up to 25 kilowatts. It's, the interesting thing with measuring high power lasers is what are you going to do with all the heat that you have coming in? So what this does is it, uh, the light comes in here in the entrance and on the inside this copper shell is coated with carbon nanotubes which is a very black coating, absorbs all the light uh, or a large fraction of the light. The light actually as it comes in there's a mirror uh, on the inside, it reflects off the high reflectivity mirror and hits the inside of this copper shell where the carbon nanotube coating is and the mirror actually spins as the light's coming in so that it, the light doesn't spend too much time on any part of the copper shell. The shell itself is actually uh, double walled so water's flowing in between it. Water flows in the back and out the front here and so that makes up the measurement. What you do is the light coming in heats up the copper shell and, this, and essentially the water. You measure the temperature of the water as it comes in and the temperature of the water as it goes out and that change in temperature along with the f knowing the flow rate and the specific heat of the water allows you to tell how much energy you put in or the laser power that you applied. This is a very nice instrument. Uh, it has about a 1% uncertainty. It can measure from, say, 250 watts up to 25 kilowatts. All measurements of optical power involve absorbing all the light. Could we come up with an idea to measure optical power that we don't have to absorb all the light and thus we don't have to heat things up? And that's uh, this idea. And it's been around for about 100 years, actually, but no one's really used it uh, to make a laser power meter. That's to use the idea of radiation pressure. Light has momentum. Photons are just like particles of any other material. When they hit something, they push on it. And light has a momentum. It's very small and 
you always think, oh, it's too small to measure, but it turns out with these high power lasers in the orders of kilowatts or tens of kilowatts, it's not too small to measure. So what we did, we took, uh, this, is, this is our radiation pressure optical power meter. It's very simple, it consists of a scale with the, you know, a normal scale, you'd have a balance pan where you put something you want to weigh on it. We took the balance pan off and we put a mirror on it, turned it up on its side, and it's here in this protective shroud. This is just a shroud to keep the air currents down. Uh, light comes in one side, reflects off the mirror, and goes out the other side. And when it reflects off the mirror, it pushes on the mirror. It turns out very simply, the force on a mirror due to light is proportional to the power. So by measuring the force on this scale, we can measure the power of the light. And it's, it's significant as you get to larger powers. It's about 660 micrograms equivalent force for a kilowatt of optical power. So that means for 100 kilowatts, uh, if you think of two staples that you use in a staple, two of those have the same weight as the force of light at 100 kilowatts would. So this is a, a laser welding booth, just a commercial setup that we have. Uh, we have a 10 kilowatt laser that brings a light in through an optical fiber here to the weld head here. There's focusing optics and a protective cover glass. The light comes out and focuses onto the workpiece. Um, and this is well known and, and a c common piece of equipment. But what we're using it for here at NIST is to do ca characterizations of laser welds kind of the ultimate goal would be, could you measure aspects of, while you're welding, could you do measurements that tell you if the weld's going to be good or not, if the weld's going to be brittle or not, if it's going to survive. And that's something interesting about the, the radiation pressure meter. It's the only thing that can actually measure all the laser power and the power is still available to use somewhere else. So a, a neat idea would be if we could miniaturize that radiation pressure meter and have it be part of the weld head to monitor power while you're welding. Or maybe a spectroscopic uh, device could be in here with just with a fiber. You could watch the weld plume and do spectroscopy on it while you're welding. One of the things that we're looking to do in this metrology program is to provide a, welding, a weld prediction database. Laser welding has been around for decades. However, it's still very much a, an empirical process. Trial and error, test a parameter, did it work? It didn't work. Test another parameter, it didn't work. Test a third parameter, okay, now the condition works and I've got a good weld, then they start manufacturing with that weld. NIST already supports a number of publicly open accessible databases, such as the thermochemical properties database, which is used extensively in the chemical industry. We're looking at using that as a model for this weld prediction database to be able to provide parameters for a particular type of weld such that you can get a good starting point right off the bat rather than have to go through the whole empirical process over again.